Sometimes I feel like I don't know why God forgives me, you know? Like the things that I do, when I look at my actions, I'm like, it's crazy. Seeing, seeing myself for what I really am. It's pretty intense. I'm trying to forgive myself, I think it's the hardest, hardest thing, you know. I'm not a saint, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a sinner. I'm terrible. I've caused a lot of destruction. In my life, I've told a lot of lies and I have not honored my word. But then every day I wake up, there's like, it's a new chance, a new day. I try to right my wrongs, I guess. I don't know. It's tough. Life is tough. It's pretty hard. I don't even know how I got this far. I like being married and stuff. I'm like, to be honest, I'm surprised that I'm still married. I'm trying to have relationships with people. It's intense. I think about like people in third world countries, they don't even have fresh water. And the things that I pray to God for and ask, complaining about my job or my relationships or my spouse or my kids. And I'm just like, wow, a lot of people don't have what I have. I think Americans, us Americans, including myself, we're spoiled. I think it's going to be harder for us to enter into God's kingdom than it is for those people. I was telling my wife the other night, I kind of wish that I wasn't born as an American. I was born in a third world country that got to encounter Jesus because that's all they have. All they have is Jesus and each other. You know, they don't have all the luxurious things that we have. You know? or the things that I'd hear as a cashier, the complaints that I get, I'm like, <sighs> one of the things that I'm learning about marriage is, and being a father or parent, sacrifice, sacrifice, especially being a Christian, like, we're born into this world, and all we can think about is ourselves. I didn't really realize what I was doing when I got baptized, looking back on it right now. And it makes total sense, like, why me and my spouse had so much arguments and fights and stuff and I realized that being a Christian, being married is like being a Christian. If you're married and you want to stay married, you might as well just be a Christian because it's sacrifice. Or if you ever plan on getting married, you might as well become a Christian because it's about sacrifice. Do not start a family if you're not ready to lose everything. 
for the other person. Don't even think about being in a relationship with anyone, especially like an intimate, like couple, God anointed man and woman, not anything else. Because if you cannot handle sacrificing yourself in a way that is constantly serving the other person, there is no point to get married. Because that's all you will do from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. Your whole life will be dedicated to serving and putting others above yourself, especially your spouse. And don't even get me started on having kids. You will have no time to yourself. And the time that you do have will be like what I'm doing right now, late night after work. But I'm going into my sleep time. And that's what it means to be like a Christian is to put our childish ways behind us. It's no longer about me. It's all about the other person. I don't think this world understands that, especially, I mean, I'm, I'm still in the world, but as I'm waking up more into Christ and dying away to myself and my desires, I find that the greatest happiness that we can ever have in this world is not what you get, it's what you lose for others. I always hated God. I, I didn't like him in any ways for the things that he's taken away from me. But I realized it was good. And I realized more of what Jesus was talking about. He who takes his life will lose it. Or he who finds his life will lose it. But he who loses his life for me will find it, which is the gospel, which is all about dying to oneself. Man, I don't remember the last time I slept pretty well. Maybe every once in a while, but not like really well, like when I was single or before I had kids. And working constantly, like I work pretty much every day. I appreciate it. I, yeah, I get more hours and stuff. It's hard for me to just, it's just so hard. I mean, it's like... But it's the greatest thing ever. I mean, kicking and screaming to God, like, why? You know, car got repoed. You know, like, just a bunch of stuff that just, like, I have not been able to focus on me at all. And I've been mad about that. And mad about to God about it. But now I look at it and I'm like, that's good. It's good. Jesus did that every day when he was in this world and he still does that today. He wakes up ready to serve, ready to put others first. That's it. He doesn't even think about himself. And if you want to be a Christian or a parent or, or a spouse or even a good friend, that's what you're required to do. To put your selfish desires on the last part of the list. You come last, not first. And at first, it's so hard. But if you, as you walk with Christ, it is the greatest gift ever. One of them, anyways. The forgiveness and the Holy Spirit. Well, life and then forgiveness and then, you know, the give. Can you imagine a world where if everyone put others first before themselves? We would be in heaven, and that's what heaven is like. Other people lifting up others putting others first above themselves. That's what Jesus did. 
and he still does. That's what the Christian life is really about. That's how the world was originally supposed to be designed. It was supposed to be designed where we sacrifice ourselves because we love each other more than we love ourselves. Like Cain and Abel. Cain wasn't able to do that in the Bible. We as human beings will not do that without expecting something in return. But God did it unconditionally, and he calls us to do it unconditionally. It was the other day I got mad at my wife, and right, again. <laughs> and God, I woke up, and, I was, and he said, I talked to a friend, and they said, serve, serve your spouse. See a need, fill a need. And I was like, what? You want me to go to work and wake up in the morning and come home and do and serve? Where's, where's any time for me? And God said this to me. He said, you want to be like Jesus, right? I said, yes. He said, that's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus does. A successful church is a serving church. There is no greater love than a man to lay his life down and put others first above himself, or a person to lay their life down and put themselves above, put the other's person above themselves. There's no greater love. And in this country, especially us as Americans, that's what is supposed to make us so great and made us so great. It's people laying their life down. I go to work and and I'm not saying I don't complain, but and I don't know I haven't lived forever, but there are definitely people that complain. Like they don't care about the the, the, the employers. You know, they don't care about their job. They don't even care about their employees or vice versa or uh, uh, employees caring about other employees. People don't, people are so in them to themselves. When I think about that, is that me? Do I do that? And I'm not saying everybody, I'm just saying, you know. Nobody really cares about other people, like as far as the majority is concerned. I'm not saying everybody, and I ha I struggle with that. But that's what it means to be a spouse, a Christian, and a father or a parent. It's not about you anymore. We want that, you know. We want we want the blessings but we don't want the responsibility. You want kids, but you still want to be selfish. You still care about your things more than you care about others. You know, people want so much, but people don't want responsibility. But it comes with the territory. It is the territory. Jesus says in the parable, you know, um, a man gave um, three different people talents. And he came back and two of them invested it and he gave them more responsibility. The last person didn't do anything with it, but just sat there. And he told him to give what he had to the person who had the most. And he threw the other person in outer darkness. He says, for those of you who've been entrusted with much, much will be required. But those of you who can't be trusted with little, the little that you have will be taken away from you. I can come up with so many analogies or scenarios of 
situations or experiences of others that I've seen lose the little that they had. If you're not grateful for what other people's stuff, how who would give you that of your own? And it's like the Bible was living and, and active. How did you end up with all this, you know? Um, why does your life look so amazing and you have so much? And I'm not saying everyone is this way, but I'm saying what I'm learning is, you know, responsibility. I've seen a lot of people losing their families, meaning like, man, me and my wife almost, I was, I went to the courthouse to get a divorce papers because I just couldn't take it no more. I couldn't take it no more. There was no more me time. They were closed that day or the people in that particular office weren't there. And I just kind of thought about it. And then this is when Jesus came to me and told me, you want, you want to get rid of your family because you don't have any more personal time. It's not about you no more. I'm like, yeah. Arguing with him, you know? Yeah. You're dang straight. He says, then you've learned nothing about the gospel, about me. That's what I do for you every day. I sacrifice myself every day for you. And I call you to do it to others, especially your spouse. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So it was a click, you know. So now my 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 priorities have changed. You know, it would be me. It would be God, me, and then whatever. And now it's like I need to resort those things. And then working on it still. And now it's like, okay, God, spouse, kids, everyone else. And at the very end, me. Like I said, I haven't perfected it, but I'm, I'm definitely starting to get it. I don't want to go on any longer, to be honest. But I would tell you one thing, I've been tired. I've been so tired lately. Every day. That's how you keep your family. That's how you get a family. That's how you keep a family. Sacrifice. That's how you keep a marriage. Sacrifice. What does your spouse need? What does your kids need? That's how you run a ministry. That's what the Christian faith is. The world doesn't do that. They won't do that. It's all about them first. But we are not supposed to be that way. God isn't that way. Christ isn't that way. We're not supposed to be that way. Sacrifice. That's the truth. This dang dog. You dog and cat been running up in here. What do you want? So you can't even get no personal time. Ain't no get no dang personal time. Look at this, watch this. Oh my gosh.
I'm done.